Hey everyone, so this is a variation of something my friend Travasi uh, worked out. Uh, Chandra Travasi was trying to work out how to get fills running with the vector sequencer as the drum sequencer primarily. Now, what she did is use some uh, external modules as well to get it working. And I don't have the same modules, but I came up with a similar idea using modules I do have, which is always fun. So what I've got is a basic beat coming out of the vector, which sounds like this. Right? And I wanted to find a way to get fills into that, but also not lose track of where the beat was up to on the vector. Now Shanda did it a certain way, which is really cool. Um, as I said, didn't have the same modules, so came up with something slightly different. So what I've done is I've primarily got the kick and snare coming out of the vector. There's no snare in the basic pattern though, right? And I wanted to have the kick and an additional sound being that snare come in during a fill. And the end result is this, basic. Right, let's pull that apart. So what I've got is an Instro little fader module here, which um, allows you to sort of dial in your, your CV out to control other things. And as you can see, when I'm... The fills are appearing. Now, the fills, as I said, are only impacting upon the kick and the snare. So the other sounds you're hearing, which is the clap and the hi-hat, which sound like this in isolation. Oops, sorry, the kick going there. So that's the hi-hat and the clap in isolation. Um, so what I did is I took the feed out of my Euclidean circles, and I got a Euclidean circles pattern going into a Geranalog Select 2 on the B channel here. Forget about the A channel at the top. I'm just using the B one for the fills. Um, and what I did is I took the Euclidean circles pattern and I blended, or not blended, but I put um, two inputs in. With One's the original kick from the vector and one is the Euclidean circles pattern. And I'm using this pink cable here to determine which of those is played. So let me pull it, let me rephrase that. Input one is the vector kick. Input two is the Euclidean circles pattern, right? And the pink cable here selects which one of those two is going to be played. So what I could have done is just had it so whenever I rise the fader, it does a fill on the kick, which I did to start with. But then when I thought, well, what if I took those triggers and was able to split them between two different sounds, so the kick and the snare? So what I did is that I then employed my branches clone, which is a Michigan Synthworks Twigs, and I took the output of the triggers from the select two, plugged it into the twigs, and then had that switching as the coin toss between the kick and the snare into my Rossum assimilator. I was then mucking around with that fader and I thought, okay, what I want to do is use that single fader to control not only the fill population of the beat, but also to add CV to the twigs so that it switches that single trigger between the kick and the snare. So as I dial the fader up, it increases the fill population from Euclidean circles, but it also, as I dial the fader up, increases the coin toss probability that each trigger will alternate between the kick and the snare. So the fills become quite interesting and I guess different, almost different every time. I mean, there'd be some quantity of, of variation, but it would be nearly indiscernible, like that you would be playing the same thing. So here we go with the beat, basic. So you can hear that swapping between the kick and the snare. More snare, less kick, or no kick, or very little kick. Back to basic. And 
because I got the clap repeating on the third beat and that little hi-hat pattern going around fairly repetitively, I keep a flow of the beat, right? So it's a great way of adding a fill on two different sounds. You could do more, of course, because that twigs I could split up between a whole lot of different things, right? Um, and just have that one fader controlling outputs to all of them. The limitation, of course, is that I've got kick and snare because they're a single trigger and it's alternating between them, I'll only have one at a given time. But that's kind of okay, because in a fill, that's kind of what happens when, when a drummer's kind of playing through things. I mean, you could do a kick and a snare at the same time, of course, in a fill, but this is pretty good. I mean, how it is. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, all right. I hope that was somewhat helpful. So the modules I'm using there, as I said, I've got the vector for the main kick, and then I've got the Euclidean circles injecting some fill patterns. Uh, they're both going into the select two. I've got then the fader output of my instro going into a malt. Uh, that's then connected one to the select two to, to select which, um, which, which of the inputs it's gonna take for the triggers out. And I've got the malt B going over to the twigs so that it increases the CV probability of the coin toss. And all of that's then triggering the assimilator. So, yeah, kind of cool.